Obviously, I'm also getting older, especially if I look back at how many years ago I started doing triathlon. But I have the feeling that I'm still not done learning. For some reason, I feel like I've never learned as much as I've learned in the past year, um, which is kind of crazy with all the lockdowns and Corona and everything I've experienced the last year. Um, I think I'm, I'm still learning so much and you're never too old to learn. So I'm not definitely not done yet. So what's, uh, what are you doing this morning, Rach? Mm, I'm first going for our 10 run to the trails, so we just leave from here. Um, I think some athletes are running shorter, but I'm doing our 10 and probably some sprites at the end. I need to ask Louis. And then um, after that, we've got a three-hour bike with some tempos, four by eight minutes. Not so hard because I haven't done any tempos yet, really. And, and then at the end of the day, we do a swim. It's just endurance because we did sprints yesterday. So the sprint, we do endurance in the 50 meter pool, so don't forget to bring your wetsuit. It's oh. fresh. Last time I did it without wetsuit, it was cold. I'm Rachel Klammer and I'm a Dutch professional triathlete. So when I'm training, I'm not really focusing on the numbers, um, especially in the training camp. I just do whatever the coach says. I know it sounds weird that most athletes don't do it, but because he's here, I can just do that. I feel like he's under control and as long as I feel like I've got it under control, it's fine as well. The only negative point is that my training peaks is not always up to date. I trust my coaches a lot. Um, I think they know what's right for me and of course I I do think with them, so if I have a training session and I think it should be different or longer or shorter, uh, I would say so. But overall, I learn to listen to my body much more than actually I did in the past. So five years ago, it was the first time that Richard and I came here, uh, which is in Namibia, just in Vintuk and it is not a place where a lot of athletes have been to probably. I don't know how the Federation really ended up going here, uh, but we decided to join from the first camp on and we really enjoy it. People are really nice, training is really good here, the weather is perfect, so we couldn't ask for more. The pools are super close by, nice trails, uh, so for us it's the perfect place to be. Last year was actually supposed to be our last time here, probably because we we're preparing for the Olympics, um, but now we moved everything on for another year. The good thing about training with Richard is that he goes really slow. So when people are wondering how can you guys train together? Well, because he trains really slow, which is perfect for me. We sometimes make, make jokes about it, but at the end he's very consistent. But that means we can only do the easy training together because when it goes fast, he goes fast and I, I can't keep up with him. And Rachel and I have been training for, well, quite some time now. I think about seven years together um, and yeah we've been here to Namibia I think this is our fifth time if I'm not wrong um, and yeah we train pretty much every day 24 7 together uh, which is which has got its plus and its minuses but uh, yeah overall it's, uh, it's it's amazing to be able to train together I think you know the lucky thing is uh, I kind of train on the easier side um, of training on, on the, the average for kind of the professional athlete um, especially the intensity wise is lower as well uh, and so it kind of works well with Rachel and myself and uh, one thing we noticed the last few years is that my kind of steady pace training uh, that I need to do kind of really works well for me to go fast and kind of for Rachel that's kind of like a higher end faster pace uh, and that works well for her so kind of got a lucky scenario where uh, the kind of the training things work for both of us uh, together uh, which is not not everyone has that luxury I think the tougher the training gets the, the better Rachel does and the more I start to suffer then so it's kind of like this medium where I start to suffer and Rachel's getting into her element 
Uh, so she definitely in, enjoys the grind. Um, and yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, cool to see definitely that she, you know, is getting better and better year on year. Uh, you know, the females end up like kind of outlasting the males sometimes in, in age, you know, I don't think males like to admit that, but uh, definitely, you know, getting stronger with age. a day early this morning at quarter to eight with a run uh, 70 minutes ending with some strides and later we're riding so we're gonna have breakfast quickly because we're just riding over an hour from now um, which will be three hours with four by eight minutes uh, on tempo it's not really hard uh, but I think it's gonna feel hard enough so we're here in training camp and we're lucky enough to have breakfast included um, so normally we do one training session and then afterwards we make sure we have enough protein and carbs especially because we did an hour 10 run now and we have a three hour bike later we didn't before we want to make sure we get enough of everything So session is done, we did 4 by 8 minutes on a climb, um, it was supposed to be like medium pace, not super hard, not super slow, I did 217 watts, 200, uh, 214, 217, 220 and 221, um, my weight is about 51 kilograms so you can calculate it yourself, uh, so it was good, the first one felt like really nice and easy, easy sort of. Uh, it became a little bit harder towards the end and we've done almost three hours 15 we're always a little bit long here on the bike my training hasn't been the same every week so we do different type of bike sessions from long endurance easy stuff to short sessions which are just the recovery sessions um, like today the four by eight minutes like steady pace but then also we have high intensity training which can be from like 30 seconds all out to somewhere like four seconds um, just before I got to camp, I did like a set where I had like 30 minutes, 1 minute and 5 minutes all out. Uh, that one is quite a painful one, but it shows you at what level you are at that moment. So now it is 10 past 2 about, um, so it's time for lunch, going to make some lunch. And if there's time, uh, I'll have a nap. Um, just because we're at altitude, well I think that's the reason I haven't slept very well at all the last two weeks. So it is time to uh, go for a nap if the next session will allow. And I think there will be enough time. So today I'm going to keep it simple because I uh, don't have too much time. Sometimes I'll make like a rice pudding or I'll have leftovers from the night before. I think we still have some leftovers but not so much. Um, so today I'll just have some bread and cheese. Um, Bread and peanut butter, I love peanut butter, some fruit, and I'll probably have some tea as well, and maybe a chocolate milk because it's cold. No, it's not that cold, but it's nice. Um, I don't eat the same thing every day, it also depends on how much time I have and what I have in the house, so I'm quite flexible. And I don't, if a lot of people would sometimes wonder if I count my calories or something, no, I definitely don't. So I'll just see if I'm really hungry, how much training I've done. Um, so from there on I just make my lunch and some days I even swap breakfast and lunch so I would have yogurt and muesli for lunch if I didn't have that in the morning um, so I'm very flexible When we're in the camp we swim about six times a week um, the distances are different, we change all the time from like about 3k's to just over 5k's. Um, today we had an easy swim, only 3.7, also because the pool is closing soon, so we're kind of lucky today. Um, but the coach told us tomorrow we'll have a long swim. So it was nice and easy today, we started with 500 um, mixed strokes, 
and then 3 by one k choice. So everyone did different stuff, like some people like to do a lot of pulling, some like more kicking, and then 200 meters cool down went by really quickly. I really like swimming in this pool because it's 50 meter and it's outdoor. Um, at home, I'm lucky enough to have a couple of pools to swim in, so I change between the 50 meter pool and the 25 meter pool. Um, we do the same thing here, uh, which is very nice because in the Netherlands we don't always have 50 meter pools. Um, it's just nice to get the stroke going and especially on the easy swim just to, just to keep swimming and a 1k goes by so much quicker than in the 25 meter pool. So when I'm swimming I really look at the pacing, um, although when it's easy, it's easy. I don't look at the clock and if, whether it's at 120 or 130, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we have sprints or interval, then I will look at the clock because then I've got set times I have to swim or want to swim. A lot of triathletes just do their swim and get out um, and I like to try to focus on my uh, technique as well, especially when I'm at home and I'm just swimming by myself or with the local swim squad there, we focus a lot on technique and I think it really helped me to do that and give me a better feeling of the water. So I don't know if I really have a game plan in the races. Um, I'm not the best swimmer, so I need to try to get as far as I can to the front. So that's all I can do actually, like try to get to the front as much as I can, get to the first buoy as fast as I can. Um, there is quite a bit of fighting in some of the races and it makes a big difference whether you're in the front or at the back. It's like the athletes in the front respect each other a bit more, so there's less fighting and a little bit more space as well. Um, so I wish you would have that at the back of the field as well. Um, so that's another thing. It's not just, you're not just a faster swimmer when you're in the front, but it also is a little bit easier. to say if I have an ultimate goal especially in the past I just kind of went from race to race to race but this year I did set myself a goal and that's the Olympics and of course I'm hoping they'll be on um, so far it looks like it and that will be my main goal so I do also need to realize that if I've got some other races in between that yes I'm at that moment I'll completely go for it but if I'm not doing well that that's not the end of the world. Super League is completely different than any other triathlon. It's short, it's fast, it's technical. Um, I think a lot of people also forget there is a lot of stuff going on in your head as well. You, you, can have, you can have trained very well, but if you ruin that transition or you forget about one specific thing, uh, you're out. Or you lose a couple of seconds and you're out of the back door. Um, I do have to say that the first time when I raced Super League, I really disliked it. They know, it's okay. <laughs> I've started to love it now. I thought I wasn't a fast and quick athlete, but it's, it's something you have to learn as well. I think it's amazing for fans to watch Super League because it's really fast um, and you see athletes coming by so often. Like if you watch a, an, an Olympic distance or Ironman, it, it can get quite boring because you see the bunch and then you wait for another 10 minutes and you see them again and nothing has changed really. And in Super League, it's just, so much stuff is going on. Um, you have to stay focused because otherwise you, you will have missed the part. And it's, it's really nice to, nicely made for TV as well. Even people who have never watched a triathlon before, they contacted me and they said they love, absolutely love watching it. I have never really had like a hero or someone I really looked up to. Uh, but I think after I've lost my mum last year, um, that when I struggle, I really think of her and I know what she would have said. So that's where I definitely get my strength out. Obviously, I'm also getting older, especially if I look back at how many years ago I started doing triathlon. But I have the feeling that I'm still not done learning. For some reason, I feel like I've never learned as much as I've learned in the past year. Um, which is kind of crazy with all the lockdowns and Corona and everything I've experienced the last year. Um, I think I'm, I'm still learning so much and you're never too old to learn. So I'm not definitely not done yet. At this stage, we don't know what's going to happen with all the races, but for now on, we just keep training and then all the roads lead to Tokyo. Make sure to subscribe to our channels and never miss out on the action. Oh, there's, a, there's a cat there. <laughs> you, it would be good if you left that in the background. <laughs> <Cat>. <laughs>